Hello, everyone, and welcome to the community meeting of the I2B2 Transmark Foundation for September 2021. Today's agenda is as uh, shown here, um, and we'll uh, we'll cover these topics and uh, have an open discussion at the end. Please, if you have questions as we're we're proceeding. Uh, you can uh, raise your hand, you can uh, send a, a message on the chat window, um, and we will try to get your question answered uh, at the best time we can. Okay, so uh, let me turn it over to Diane. Hi, everyone. I hope you all had a, a good summer. We haven't um, actually had a meeting in the last couple of months, so um, believe it or not, it's September, and weather's cooling yeah. down, and we're, uh, we're gearing up to, to get this going. Um, so Rudy, you can go to the next slide. I'm gonna just kick off quickly and um, give a real quick update about a, a symposium that we're um, sponsoring uh, starting um, November 16th. It's, um, it's all about the 4C um, Fall Symposium. Um, I think you folks remember, I think we've, we've talked about 4CE quite a bit in these meetings and this was really an effort that um, Zach Kohani um, kicked off to really focus on um, COVID-19. So the meeting will be November um, 16th. Um, it's gonna be a half day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And um, if you go to the next slide, Okay, and I apologize for the um, the um, the Zoom meeting that because I'm uh, I need to allow people in one by one. I think we must have had an update uh, Zoom update in the last couple of months that's requiring this. Um, so a four CE, um, it's really an effort around um, leveraging I two B two and OMOP networks um, to. Uh, to pull together uh, data focused on COVID-19. And th this is the uh, conference agenda. I should go to the next slide, Rudy. Okay, so we'll, we'll have um, achievements for a little over an hour, looking at what was done in the uh, US, Italy, Singapore, France, and India. Um, we'll have a con a, an update on the force e packaging, actually what was done, how the packaging was put, was pulled together, and then links to complementary efforts. We'll talk about recover. I think we're gonna try to get somebody from N3C, um, Odyssey, uh, the WHO and um, CDC. And then we'll have um, Dell talk about um, our strategic partnership. So save the date. I think it's going to be a great conference. And I think, is that my last slide, Rudy? Yep. So we can um, jump to the next um, topic. I think uh, Sean is going to introduce this topic, and then um, Mitch will take it from there. Thanks, Dan. And yes, I, I'm, uh, I'm just going to say a little tiny bit about what's um, uh, really happening uh, in the country of uh, right now, I, we might have some international folks on. So in the, in the, in the US, um, the government has really taken post-acute sequelae of COVID, that is, you know, brain fog and arrhythmias and trouble breathing and very seriously and are very concerned about um, the population and how many people in the US uh, could end up, you know, permanently disabled from uh, having had COVID. Unfortunately, very similar to how people were permanently disabled after getting the, um, you know, the flu back in 1918. Um, and so uh, they allocated uh, $1.2 billion to study this. Of that, we got a little bit and we're uh, at Mass General Brigham, the, uh, data resource core and that will utilize i2b2 to harmonize all the data across the country on the cohort that's getting created which is called the recover cohort uh, cohort it's a 
uh, Recover is the name of the project, the COB in the middle stands for COVID. So Niche, uh, who obviously uh, many of you know as one of our most uh, uh, prestigious developers uh, in, in I2B2, has uh, taken on working through an ontology editing tool, which we need to put in place for uh, harmonizing a great deal of data, um, much of which is collected as part of a um, clinical cohort or observational trial. And what that means is that it's in REDCap. <laughs> so a lot of data comes from REDCap or Excel files collected you know, by hand by research uh, assistants at uh, 254 different sites across the country and comes into a central uh, uh, data collection facility that then we end up uh, representing in I2B2 after going through a lot of quality control and so forth. And in I2B2, we then, uh, as the study goes on, we'll add you know, EHR data from those uh, patients, as well as uh, many other kinds of data that they're collecting as part of the study, including lots of different kinds of novel imaging results and so forth. So um, very exciting project, but the first step is certainly to get it all harmonized. Uh, and the way we do it in I2B2 Transmart is we do it in through the I2B2 Transmart ontology. And so Mitch is going to present on that. Great. Thanks so much, Sean. All right, I think I'm sharing my screen now. Okay, um, I'm just gonna fly through these slides. I think Sean gave a much better introduction than I could give for Recover, but um, you know, just to give some context uh, for this tool. And this is just the alphabet soup of, uh, <laughs> of, of, the, of the various acronyms. Um, uh, so the project comes out of uh, officially the NIH, but um, uh, the NHL, NHLBI, the uh, NH, NIH National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute. Um, and as Sean mentioned, uh, it's to study PASC, which is post-acute sequelae of COVID, or also known as long COVID. So I'm just going to go through some of these slides. Um, these are just various um, news and releases about the initiative that NIH is taking to uh, to begin to study long COVID. And all of this results in uh, this project called Recover. Uh, so as Sean mentioned, there's a clinical science core out of New York and at Mass General Brigham, um, we have the data, we are the data resource core. And I'll just go over some initial planning um, diagram just to give some context um, in preparation to show you what the ontology tool, editing tool looks like. So uh, the project essentially uh, captures and tries to harmonize all these various data sources. Um, and so just like Sean already described, we use this I2B2 common data model to try to harmonize this data. And uh, here we have the Shrine. Um, I think everyone's familiar with this project to do some QA and reporting. And ultimately, all of this data um, from REDCap to the various uh, uh, future plans of the bio repository and the EHR data and mobile and digital health data um, are coming into this, what we're calling the centralized I2B2 uh, Transmar data index. And the idea here is to create a, a very large uh, scalable I2B2 index that indexes the data so that ultimately allows researchers and investigators at the end to, um, to study the data. So we're basically creating a very large index for the, for the country on long COVID data and allowing uh, investigators to uh, be able to work on that data in a secure way 
um, providing analytical tools in a secure kind of workbench enclave and um, harmonizing the data so that you can create data sets and, and various um, formats of data to use. Uh, this slide just shows that um, these are just various projects along the years. And I think uh, many people are familiar with, with ACT, the crew of the clinical trials. And so a lot of the lessons learned and some of the technologies that we developed um, and, and used throughout the years um, is all part of this um, project and or it's, it's contributing to the strategy of, 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 of the project. So here is the, uh, the ACT. Uh, we have the MGB, the Mass General Brigham Biobank Portal, which is an internal um, biobank project using I2B2. We have also developed a clinical image bank at Mass General. Um, the COVID Biobank Portal is uh, a new project that, that has informed us on, on, on studying the data more in an exported way. We have the data lake for digital device data, and then the Biobank Disease Challenge, which was conducted a, a few years ago. Um, which we've learned a lot of lessons from. Uh, this is just screenshots of what, what some of the projects look like. This is what the Biobank portal at Master and Brigham looks like. Uh, so it's very similar to I2B2. It's just um, we've updated the client a little bit and we've implemented features here that you've probably seen um, get pushed back into the open source I2B2 um, throughout the years. So we developed like the the info tab on the top left for the ontology, and I'll get give you a closer look at that um, in a few in a few minutes. And this is just what you know what the biobank portal ontology looks like, and we have little eyes next to each um, folder you can see, and uh, we have a way to trigger you know to, to tag uh, URLs um, with each concept. This is just what the clinical image bank looks like. Okay, now I'll get to this now, just try to give you a quick uh, introduction to the ontology browser before we do a live demo. So um, as, as Sean gave a really good introduction about, you know, the first step of, of this project is to try to, you know, harmonize the initial data that, that, that we're receiving through um, through the I2B2 Transmart ontology. So the earliest goals we set out for this ontology tool is very, very, very simple. Um, it's to view an ontology and, you know, various term information um, easily. So this just really means, you know, when we are developing when, when one is developing an I2B2 ontology, you know, how do we just view it um, in the most basic way, the easiest way, you know, without um, having to install the, the web client and then, you know, all the various pieces to I2B2, how do we just focus on the ontology piece? Uh, another early goal is just the ability to make simple changes to the ontology. So this is um, the ability to, you know, edit the name, possibly copy and paste things around, um, et cetera, changing uh, items to folders or to containers. And I'll show exactly how that happens. So then ultimately the future goal is once we can, once someone can use this tool to, you know, modify, easily modify the ontology to their liking, uh, we want to develop a, a mechanism and a strategy to distribute this ontology. So that's just as part of the part of the goal for the tool. Um, so just be, after the goals, there, here's are some early use cases. Um, so the initial part of the project is to capture data right across the country using REDCap. So one of the goals or one of the use cases of this tool is to be able to, uh, you know, view and modify a ontology that was imported from REDCap easily and collaboratively. And while you make these edits and changes, et cetera, we want to just make sure that we can preserve the history of changes. And so some of this work already exists and we're just taking, I think, various uh, routes for implementation. 
and so uh, as part as as part of IGP two one dot seven dot twelve a, I think you've seen some of the import uh, work from basically the red cap to IGP two importer that that Mike Mendez has worked on, and it 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 definitely has informed us on on some of the early ways that 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 we can um, get things working. Uh, just to note the way that this works and it's all ITV2 ontology driven, but there's some only two requirements to be able to use this tool. Uh, so the logged in user must have the editor role. And so this is just your typical roles that you're already used to, um, where every user in ITV2 would have user, you know, data obfuscated or data ag. And so if you want a user to be able to edit uh, ontologies through a UI, then you have to also assign them the editor role. So this is already built in, into ITB2. And the second thing is uh, terms in the metadata, in the, in the ITB2 ontology from a table point of view must have an E appended to the, to the column C visual attributes. So on the bottom here, it's just an example table of one uh, folder in the demo data. And so you, you can see this is, you know, the C full name, you have the C name Calera, then um, here you have C visual attributes. And, and right now, um, if you have the demo data set up in, in, in your table, you would see it has an FA, which stands for uh, folder and it's active. And so it's, uh, you would see this as a, as a little folder icon in the IGP2 query tool. So in order to make this thing, so you can think of this as a read only right now. And in order to make this concept, uh, editable, ed ed editable, uh, you would just append an E. And so you, if you wanted to make your, all your ontology, um, to be able to be modified, then you would append an E to every single row. So this is just a screenshot of what the ontolo ontology browser looks like right now, but um, I'm going to attempt to give you a live demo. <laughs> okay, so this, so this ontology browser um, is a derivative of, of the I think of what I showed before the, the master and Brigham biobank portal, um, web client. So we, um, kind of basically stripped it to the, some of the bare bones and built it back up to include the editing features. And so I want to mention, uh, before I just start showing this is, uh, all of this is actually already built in into ITV2. So Lori Phillips has worked on um, on all of this work to be able to um, allow the ontology to be modified through web services. And if anyone is using the ITB2 workbench, you know, the, the heavy uh, client, uh, this, the tools, Lori Phillips has already built all of the tools um, in that heavy client to do this similar work. So you can think of this, uh, this web um, ontology browser tool or editing tool to be, uh, just basically a port, um, of, of the best features that, that Lori has already, de already developed. Okay. So, so this is a live demo, um, just to go over some things. So this on the, on the, just to expand or to close everything, uh, this is just the ITB2 demo data that's distributed from, from ITB2. When you download the software, you would see. Um, this is the demo ontology that comes with it. Uh, so you would be able to deploy this ontology browser just as the same way you would deploy the web client. You would just um, copy a folder into your web server, um, configure a couple configurations, uh, and basically you would see this right away. You would be able to open it and you would see the ontology without um, having actually to set up the CRC or the workplace cells. So this thing is basically all driven off of the ontology cell um, in ITP2. And so 
I'm just going to go over some features and not <laughs> no order of importance. Um, uh, so you can see here, this is what you would see in the web client, but now some of some folders are purple, right? And so if I, if I expand the diagnosis ICD 10 folder, it, they're all purple. And this is because of that E that I uh, mentioned before. So I've set all of these rows in the database to be editable, but you can see like there's demographics folders that are all still yellow. And so I can't actually do anything with these, um, concepts. Okay. So what is it, what can I actually do, you know, now that a concept is set to be able to be modified. So, um, I'll, I'm going to basically stay in this custom metadata. So as not to mess up the rest of my demo data. Um, but you can see here when I right click on on uh, basically a top level folder, I have this now an, uh, an option called new. And this thing again, is all port of the of the of the heavy client that Lori worked on. Um, but um, this basically gives you kind of a step by step process of creating a new item in in I2B2 in the ontology. So after I click new, I'm able to choose, you know, do I want to create a new folder, a new item, or a new container? So a container is like a non draggable folder. Um, so I would let, let's just try to create an item. And now I, all I would do is type in whatever item, uh, I wanted to create. So let's just try, uh, test one, two, two, three, four, five, great name for things. Um, I can specify a base code. So it loads all of the, um, basically the, uh, if you're familiar with I2, the I2B2 schemes, um, but it loads all of the, uh, various base code, um, pre prepended base codes here. And, uh, I can type in a comment, add a lab value. Um, but I'm just right now, I'm just going to create this very basic thing and hope that it works. So it says successful and you can see here now I have a, a new leaf node in the custom metadata data folder called test one, two, three, four, five. Now, of course, you know, I think that most typical way that people edit the ontology is doing it through straight SQL. So this is, this is just really, you know, not to replace the, the SQL method, right? That's the kind of the advanced way. This is just a kind of a complementary way to make these um, straightforward, simple modifications. And so the use case here is that when you use a tool like, like Mike's, um, red cap to ITB2 ontology, uh, or sorry, red cap to ITB2 exporter, um, it basically would import all of the questions from your red cap project into the ITB2 ontology, right? So it's, it's kind of a very flat ontology. So it would have sometimes a bunch of questions with its answers and values, et cetera. But sometimes you would want to, um, you know, copy and paste things around or even just edit the, the names. So I'll just give you an example here. Uh, I don't have any red cap data loaded in this project. This is, I just reloaded the demo data. Um, but for example, if I wanted to create, or, or let's say copy diseases of the circulatory system, um, item into my custom metadata folder or into any of these folders up here. Uh, you know, I would right now, the only way is I would have to go into the SQL server or your SQL database and, and, and execute a SQL statement to do such a thing. But here I can right click on any of these terms and, uh, click copy. And now it says that it has been copied and I could direct my, to, to my destination and hit paste. And it has successfully pasted and hopefully it's in here. And so here I just copied the diseases of the circuitry system, um, folder into this custom metadata. So this is a, a way to start to build up and, and be able to modify simple ontologies. Uh, what else? There's also a term key locator. So this is just a very basic function here, but the idea is if let's say that I was collaborating on a, on the same ontology, right. Or, or this was publicly available. Um, and someone says, Hey, Nitch, uh, can you take a look at this specific concept? 
uh, and here's the path, right? So you, they, they can actually send me the path. And I think you can see my notepad here. So if they emailed me this path and I was working on the same ontology, I would be able to copy and paste this path into the here and hopefully. So, you know, they wanted me to work on acute rheumatic fever, uh, but, uh, and I can just paste it here without having to navigate around. So this is a way to just, you know, unlock some of the collaboration features um, easily. And on the right-hand side of this, client, you would see, you're very familiar if you're using one of the latest um, work uh, web clients, is that this is the kind of the info tab that you would see the, in the ontology uh, section of the web client, but it's kind of blown up. So uh, let me just try to show a lab test. Okay, so just clicking on it is a, just a random lab test, but you can see what it's showing me here is that uh, it gives me a human readable description of, of any concept really. Um, so this is kind of dynamically generated and it just says this term is draggable. So it's a draggable folder. So that, that means that if you were in the web client, you could drag this to build up a query. Um, it has a code of the link, uh, this one and it may have children below it. So it's detecting that it's a folder and it has um, at least one or more children. Um, you can see the tooltip is presented here and here's the term key. You know, this is also known as the C full name, but the, the term key that you could basically just paste, copy and paste this to send an email to someone. Um, here you can see that this term accepts values to be set. So what does this mean? It means that because this is a lab test concept, it has a, um, C metadata XML associated to it. And I, and you can click the preview value box to see, uh, what this looks like. Uh, and lastly, I actually, I think the history I tried, tried to this, this morning, it wasn't, well, if this, if this, if this history tab was working, you would actually see all of the deleted terms, uh, that, that I deleted. So let's say I right, right clicked on test one, two, three, four, five, and I deleted it. Uh, you would be able to see all of these, um, a trail of, of, of what I've done and the ability to restore, uh, the deleted, um, terms. Uh, and then the last thing just to show, uh, is still trying to build this into a more usable uh, way, but let's just say that I had uh, was building, I, I was creating a new item, uh, you know, called COVID test. But in this comment field, we're doing some things with the BioBank portal that um, hopefully we can again port to the I2B2 web client. So these are kind of hidden things in that we've been working on in our internal version of I2B2. But just to give you an example, what the comment field um, allows us to do is we can, we're using it as a, um, as a mechanism to attach URLs to um, any term. So let me here just type in, and this is just syntax that we created, but um, this would be appended to your comment field, and then you would be able to create. And if you typed in a URL in between those tags, you can see that this, the COVID test item that I just created now has a little eye icon next to it. And when you click on it, you can see that here now you have a new um, entry that says this term has a wiki entry attached to it. And when you click on the view, the wiki page, it opens Google, which is the URL that I entered. And I think that's it for the live demo. So just, just to mention, so the idea here is, you know, where it's, where it's going is, um, once you're satisfied with this ontology, you know, we, we want to be able to build in some, some way to, to export or save this ontology and then be able to have some kind of distribution, uh, mechanism so that you could send or, you know, load and import export ontologies around. 
So let me see if I have any more slides. I think that was it. Let's see. Um, oh, summary. Okay. So just end, <laughs> just just ending this thing as uh yep. So we're so the, so the summary of the whole project is is the recover project is is to gather patient data from across the U.S. Um, to study PASC. Um, we're using I2B2 in a very um, massive and scalable way to create this very large uh, index for the country, and um, you know patient data of 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 all kinds of, of harmonized data can be packaged um, into usable uh, sets for analysis. And ultimately automating this flow of data to a broad set of analytical endpoints will enable the learning healthcare system. And so this tool, um, this ontology tool that I just showed has been, I did cut a version of version one that we wanna put up um, open source to the I2B2 community, um, I think very, very soon. I think that's about, oh. all right, that's about it. <clears throat> okay, thanks, Nitch. Um, we can open up for questions if anyone has any questions you'd like to ask. I think you can, you should be able to unmute yourself and ask or Put a note in the chat window. <clears throat> Hi, Nitch. Uh, this is Bill from uh, Harvard Catalyst. I a couple quick um, questions. Um, so the first is, would in terms of getting this tool set up? Well, first of all, great work. Um, um, this is really cool, a, a cool tool. Um, in terms of getting it set up and running, uh, is there, what kind of like chicken and egg problem is there? Do you have to have an existing ontology to run the ontology cell and start using this? Or could you start this, could you start an ontology cell with an empty ontology and 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 uh, build one out using this? I know that most people, um, for might use direct SQL editing, but I'm wondering if this would be if that would be possible. Yeah, that's that's a that's a great question. Um, so you need at least the ontology cell set up with the most minimal um, tables, and they could be they could be empty, but it does rely on, uh, for example, if you're you know familiar with a table access table, which is all the root nodes. Of an ontology that connects to all of the metadata tables, um, you would at least, you would at least have to have one entry in the table access table, you know, called uh, you know, Bill's metadata, which could point to a empty metadata table, uh, and then from there you could use this tool to start essentially from scratch. But um, you would still need to set up just a couple. Uh, underlying tables um, uh, to, to be able to use it. And, and Michelle just asked a, a, a related question is, do you need the PM cell? Um, yes. And so the, the cells that you do need are the PM cell and the ontology cell. And so uh, the idea is that you wanna set up a project um, with, a, with one user, right? With the editor role. And then you would wanna set up um, a, I would say a, an empty ontology, you know, ready to go, but you, you, you couldn't just start from, um, an ontology set with, with no data in it, like with no rows. Okay, great. And then, um, one other question is, um, are the changes that, that you make, uh, is this like live editing of the ontology? Are they immediately available once you've, once you've made them? Um, uh, yeah. or do you, is there like a commit that you have to do in order to transfer them from like a working area into the you know the the live section of the database. Right. Exactly. Um. Okay. So so this is this is a live commit. Um. So okay. so one thing. So yeah. As soon as you edit a term, and if a term is set to to be um, modifiable, then um, it makes a change right away. 
Um, but you do bring up a good point is the, the, the strategy that we would use, um, that, that we're using now is to kind of have two projects, right? And so um, one is kind of our, our staging area, you would be able to edit just various things and, and basically everything's editable. And then we have a way to, uh, you know, compare it with the live one and, and kind of commit just those changes to the um, production environment per se. So, um, right. So if you have like a I2BT production um, system already running at your institution, you wouldn't want to use this tool to just go in right away. I definitely point it to a kind of a dev or staging environment um, just to see how those changes go because, um, yeah, all, all of the changes you make are, are live. Great, thank you, and, and nice job again. Thanks, Bill. Okay, uh, one more question. Um, How do I determine the version of it we do I have in production? No, okay. A great question. Yes, I, somebody, I, yeah. I just had someone ask me that, and it's been well over probably a year and a half, two years since I worked on I2B2, so it's been running fine, but <laughs> it's like, okay, there's so many pieces, what? How do I answer that? Great question. I think the easiest way is if you just go to the your I2B2 web client and um, view source on it you know, in, in your browser, um, towards the top of that, of the source code for the, for the web client is, is a version. So, uh, that's one of the, the easiest ways to view the version. Okay. So that, it, would, that, it would say something like one seven eleven or one seven ten or one seven twelve a, uh, well, the actual, the, the web client shows is, is 12 a. So, okay. But I didn't know if that was just the client or not. So. Yeah, good point. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Uh, thanks. Oh, thank you. That was that was great. One more uh, quick topic um, for this call. Uh, I'm just going to talk really briefly about the I2B2 Transmart integration uh, project that we've been working on. Um, we, uh, I think we've, we've discussed here um, at previous meetings the uh, the data model. Uh, we've been working to uh, bring Transmart into line with the uh, current I2B2 data model that's being used. Uh, and this has actually been done uh, and as part of uh, Transmart 19.1. We are using uh, the, the the same data model as with uh, with I2B2, uh, and um, the intention is to get uh, interoperability uh, across Transmart and I2B2, so that you can actually load a data set from I2B2 uh, directly into Transmart and use the Transmart tools on it, uh, and also the other way around, and I2B2 load a Transmart data set, uh, and uh, we actually have this this working, um, uh, in, at least in, in test. Uh, but really what we're looking to be able to do is actually do some things uh, across, um, you know, in the data sets once we have them loaded. And that's the part that we're, we're currently working uh, on so that you can, for example, in Transmart open an I2B2 data set and use some of the um, uh, data analysis tools, uh, some of the RStudio uh, tools uh, on the data uh, and then be able to make use of that. And so, we're hoping to be able to show that um, very soon uh, and uh, some illustration of some of the ways that that can be done. Uh, obviously, there are some challenges and that Transmart handles more than just human data and uh, other other uh, types of issues that we're still you know, sort of sorting through, but I think we're making some good, good progress there. Um, and alongside this, we've also been working on uh, building out our uh, COVID-19 uh, data set within Transmart uh, and bringing uh, various studies in and then making those available. So for Transmart 19.1, you're going to have access to, you know, both the integration with I2B2 as well as these other, other data sets, um, plus a few other uh, updates in 19.1. 19.1 is getting close to being released. 
Um, we are, uh, the other uh, part that uh, has been re uh, requested quite often is a Docker instance. Uh, and again, uh, we uh, expect to have a preview version of this available within another uh, week or two, and we'll let, let you all know about that. Uh, so this will be for uh, Transmart 19.1, and uh, we expect to have that available um, at least for a preview very soon, and then the whole release done within uh, a few weeks um, that will incorporate uh, all these different pieces. <clears throat> we also uh, have a full installation script for if you're interested in just deploying your own version. Uh, and we're starting to expand a bit about what um, what uh, op operating systems that we can actually run on, uh, as you can see here. So um, stay tuned. We'll have more information about this um, in uh, possibly, uh, hopefully at the next community meeting, uh, just to let you know how things are going and hopefully have uh, maybe a demo at that point to show you uh, some of these things uh, in operation. Rudy, were you, you, were you trying to show yeah. a slide? Oh, I'm sorry. I, yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, too many steps, right? Here's share screen. I thought I did the share screen. I'm sorry about that. So I will just flip through these real quickly, right? That we, we did the common data model. Uh, we had talked about that um, previously. Uh, obviously these will be in the recording uh, and then the, the deck that we, we, we um, Distribute. You can see it now, right, Sean? <clears throat> Working on the interoperability uh, between Transmart and IPB2. Um, our, our COVID project, uh, again, uh, we've, we've talked about that here. Uh, the main thing I wanted to mention, though, was that 19.1 uh, is getting close to release. Uh, and we are working on, Peter. Peter's working on a, a Docker instance that, that will be available. Um, and hopefully we'll have a, a preview of that within a, a week or two um, that we could start to show. So I think that's um, that's what I wanted to say here. And uh, sorry about missing the uh, share screen button, um, but happy to answer any questions. Uh, otherwise we can conclude. I think this was the last topic that we've had for today. I noticed um, Jeff Klan is on, um, and I don't know if Jeff wants to, to say anything about the upcoming AMIA um, conference in November. I know that there's a session um, that he's sponsoring uh, that will uh, talk about the, the IHP2 Transmart um, integration that we're all very excited about. Hey, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm lurking here too. Um... Yeah, I mean, Diane, you said it all. There, there's a session about ITV2 Transmart integration on Wednesday morning. So if you happen to be in AMIA, stick around for the, the beginning of the last day because we'll have a, a demo of ITV2 Transmart integration by then. And that session should also be recorded. Uh, it will be recorded. I'm not sure if it'll be open to, to everyone or if we might have to go through an AMIA paywall to get to it, but we'll try to try to share that with everyone eventually. Um, also, if you happen to be at AMIA, don't forget there's an I2B2 workshop that uh, Kavi is uh, organizing that a lot of us are involved mm -hmm. in on um, the, the very beginning of AMIA, just before the session started, I believe on Saturday. So um, that, that would also be a, a great thing to see some of you people at if you happen to be in San Diego. <clears throat> I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. We'll have, we'll have more <clears throat> on this integration, like Rudy said, next, next yep. meeting. Super. Okay. So we can open up now to any kind of any questions. Um, if anybody has anything else they'd like to ask about, further comments. <clears throat> if not, I'm gonna turn it back over to Diane. To conclude. Unmute myself. Thanks for joining, everyone. Um, you know, as, as always, we welcome uh, new topics for our monthly meeting. So if, if there's something you'd like to, um, to hear or present in October, um, let us know. Um, the November meeting is actually the same day as the 4CE um, symposium. So, you know, hoping you can um, join that and there'll be more information on, um, on that coming out very soon as we finalize the agenda. Um, so I think that that's it for today, unless anybody has anything else. And uh, just as a reminder, we do record um, all these meetings and have the slides available on the website. Uh, and we also have a YouTube channel uh, where all these recordings uh, are available for you to, to view. Okay, thank you.